Ashe. Ashe, I'm going to rise in a grand day to you all once again, my fellow humans. And to be specific, Ashe, I'm going to rise in a grand day to you all, my fellow natural native earthly humans. I have to be specific in <laughs> these days. And let me say welcome to part nine of this uh, another of my thought provoking presentation titled Retirement Plan for People 40 to 75. Another perspective with yours truly, I, the mystic philosopher. And again, just to remind you, my dear beloved people, that it is high time for thinking. It is high time for reason and for reasoning. Now, um, uh, pardon my voice, because the reason why I've been um, out of commission for a few days, because <laughs> my body was um, invaded by that flu bug. But now I'm almost there, just my voice. Um, to get back to its normal state or its natural state. Now, if you haven't yet watched part one to part eight, I ask that you, you please do so before you watch this, um, this part nine. So what exactly do I mean? If you have watched part one to, um, part one to part eight, you'll understand. So what exactly do I mean when I say that from my perspective, our children, aka our offspring, are not necessarily obligated. And it is also possible that they are not naturally obligated, if at all obligated, to, tear, to take care of us um, when we are old or should we live long enough to become old and uh, disabled just because we are their parents. Now first, I interpret the English word necessarily to mean that in every case, in every situation and under any and all circumstances, and by logical extension, I interpret not necessarily to mean the opposite, meaning not in every case, not in every situation, and not under every circumstance or all circumstances. And I also interpret the word obligated and, uh, slash oblige as defined earlier in part eight. And again, I quote, caused by law or conscience to follow a certain course, unquote. And to take it a step further, and as defined by another um, English dictionary, from which I'll quote, to be constrained by a physical, moral, or legal force or conscience necessity or circumstances unquote therefore by not necessarily obligated i mean to say that in every case in every given situation and i'm sure that some of you my listeners and watchers can or may be thinking of some cases or some situations that are or that might be qualified right now or under any and all circumstances, a child, the children, or the offspring, or to be even more precise, our children or our offspring are obligated, or if you prefer, obliged, one way or the other to take care of us. And nor should they be obligated and all the aforementioned to take care of us, their elderly, just because we are their parents, aka 
the, the, um, the source or the channel through which they enter here. I also mentioned earlier that from my perspective, to be obligated and obligations of all form is from my perspective an infringement or a violation of that which we call or believe to be our free will or that which we refer to as our free will. In fact, let me repeat what I have said earlier in regards to the words obligation and free will. Again, I, uh, my interpretation of this is that obligation of any form or to be obligated to do something or to do anything is not a matter of choice. Favorable choice, I might add. Or it is not a matter of that which is called free will. But it is a matter of force, a matter of constraint, which can also be interpreted as a violation of our free will. If indeed it, free will, does exist, and if our knowledge, our understanding, um, our understanding and overstanding of it, free will is at all correct. Second is not, uh, not, not naturally obligated. And what exactly do I mean by naturally obligated as opposed to not naturally obligation, uh, obligated? And is it also possible that it is true that they they meaning our children or our offspring, are not naturally obligated to take care of us, their parents. From my perspective, naturally obligated, a.k.a. naturally compelled, naturally forced, or natu and naturally constrained, etc., in all practical reality means that our source and our mother nature Cause us to be, also known as brought us into existence and inherit, inherently programmed us. And in this case, thereby force us to take care of our parents or our elders, just like all other, um, just like all other animals that are inherently and naturally programmed to take care of their young. And thus, not naturally obligated, a.k.a. not naturally compelled, not naturally forced, is simply the opposite of that, meaning our source and our mother nature did not and has not inherently programmed us, thereby forced us to take care of our young, let alone our parents or our elders or the elderly. And I, the mystic philosopher, just don't happen to think or to believe that she did. And thus, from my perspective, the latter is right. The latter meaning we are not naturally obligated, a.k.a. naturally compelled, naturally forced to take care of our parents or our elders. Now, you may no doubt notice and realize from part 8 that the word from part of that uh, that the word is meaning definition and ideas that are enveloped therein that I am having issues with yes you may let me repeat that you may no doubt notice and realize from part a that the word its meaning definitions and ideas that are enveloped therein that I am having issues with is the word obligate the verb and by extension obligated the adjective and the and obligation the noun i don't think or believe that we the natural native earth the humans are forced or obligated by nature to do anything for that matter we are given a thing called the mind 
the intellect with all its components and the opportunity or the will to make choices. Now, from my perspective, the personal questions that we must ask and answer to ourselves and while doing so to be to ourselves be true with each answer are these number one are we using it meaning are we using our individual mind and let us think before we answer and are we sure now question number two how are we using it how are we using our minds individual minds Number three, question number three, when do we use it? Or when are we using it? And question number four, who is using it? Who is using our mind? Question number five, who is in control of it? But more on that point later. Naturally obligated, a.k.a. natural obligation. From my perspective, no, we the natural native earthly humans are not naturally obligated to do anything. And if or when most things, if not all things, are seriously considered, no doubt you too, or at the very least, some of you, my listeners, may agree that I am right. You may also see it from my perspective. In other words, nature does not force or compel us to do anything. And nor does she or will she infringe on the greatest gift that I think that she has given to us, namely our free will. Yes, from my perspective, our source and mother, Mother Nature, in conjunction with her infinite wisdom and her immutable laws, has given us a physical body, or if you prefer, a physical vehicle, in this physical world for our spirit, our soul, or if you prefer the non-physical part of us to be incarnated in. And she has also given us all an individual mind with a fear conscience, the purpose of which is for us to think, and not just to think, but to think critically to think analytically, to think logically, to reason with ourselves. And when and where necessary, reason one with another, to judge critically, fairly and wisely, and to come to our conclusions and make our decisions and to do things on our own and above all, to manage and control our physical body, a.k.a. our physical vehicle. And with all that said, from my perspective, she does not force us to do anything. The evidence will also show that our source and mother, Mother Nature, cause us to be, if you prefer, cause us to exist as her natural native earthly humans. And from my perspective, that is what truly distinguished us from all the other animals, be they called or seen as human, um, humankind, mankind, womankind, human being, etc. And just to remind you that not everything that looks like us, the natural native earthly humans, are us. And possible, it is also one of the highest honor, if not the highest honor that we can achieve on this um, physical plane and in this thing that we call life. The evidence will show that she did not cause us to be or cause us to exist as our natural native earthly humans in order for us to become like the artificial ones, in order for us to become like the unnatural ones, the evil ones, the anti-nature ones, the anti-humans, the enemies of humans, the demons, the so-called leaders, world leaders and politicians, etc., the evidence will also show that she did not create or invent us, let alone create or invent us to be robots or to be like robots, to be cyborgs or bionic, bionic humans or to be like cyborgs. 
to be um, 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 uh, automatons are like uh, to be like are to be like automatons and to be androids or like androids to be transhumans or like transhumans and all other unnatural aliens and their alien forms and inventions but simply and just for us you just simply and just for us to be her natural mother nature's natural native earthly humans now before we continue let us look at how the dictionaries define natural obligation or moral obligation a uh, free dictionary that come and i quote natural obligation civil law one which in honor and conscience binds the person who has contracted it but which cannot be enforced in a court of justice unquote this from my perspective just further prove my point even more that we are not naturally obligated or not, are naturally forced to take care of our parents just like how children our children our offspring are not naturally obligated or naturally forced to take care of us their parent but that we only do so meaning that we take care of our elders and our parents if or when we can out of honor out of respect out of gratitude and out of conscience and that our children or offspring will or might only do so if they can only out of honor and out of conscience now what is natural or moral obligation again i quote a natural or moral obligation is an obligation that is not legally enforceable but an obligation that compels the obligor to perform due to moral compulsion one no judicial um, action for obligee a natural obligation isn't enforceable by judicial action thus the obligee can't compel performance and the obligor isn't bound to render a performance and quote now for this part um now and again i just know i'm just noticing here that i have run out of time or the time that is allotted for this segment and thus i will have to end this part eight here so i ask that you please join me in part nine for the continuation of retirement plan for people 40 to 75 under the perspective with yours truly i the mystic philosopher and where and when <coughs> sorry I will be identifying a few animals and their relationship with their parents, with their elders, and how we humans today can possibly learn a lot from them. As I continue asking the question, can our children, our spouse, our members of our families, close relatives, abandon us and refuse to take care of us when we are old and especially if or when we are determined by them to be good for nothing or to value nothing and i think that it is going to get even more interesting if not informative so i ask that you please join me i ask that you please stay tuned in the meantime and between time my people in your becoming i will let you be more and more and much much more not less aka bless for I am the mystic philosopher. Ashe, 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 I have said.